Good morning, AJ. It's Friday. It's January 23rd, and I have a lot to talk about. It might actually not be that much. We'll see. Obama. I'm hoping to have this video out by the time we leave campus this afternoon. First of all, punishments. AJ, I wasn't going to punish you today, but you volunteered for it, so I suppose it's going to happen. Only about 50% of the people I talked to said yes, and I was hoping for 80% because I voted no, and I think that my vote carries a little bit of weight to it. Thank you for volunteering your life for the good of the universe. And I promise you, no more time paradoxes for me. This includes going into the future to meet the winner of this year's South Pacific CEO Celebrity Deathmatch. As it turns out, the South Pacific CEO Celebrity Deathmatch is a lot larger than we had originally anticipated. Whoa, I just did two special moves in about a Tim. Oh, sorry. It takes place on a secret island in the South Pacific near Tahiti that cannot be seen by those that are not on the island. This is in order to keep the competition as secret as possible. Every two years, CEOs from around the country gather to compete in a single elimination tournament for the championship. The winners buy out the losers' companies. Two years ago, Steve Ballmer from Microsoft came this close to beating Jerry Yang from Yahoo. Alas, he did not acquire the company. I have compiled a list of possible participants in this year's South Pacific CEO Celebrity Deathmatch. Here, let me show you. We already know about Apple CEO Steve Jobs, who is out sick, or so he says. It turns out that Steve Jobs is actually a returning fighter. About 20 years ago, he was originally fired from Apple, which is when he made his first appearance on the deathmatch circuit. Bill Gates actually resigned from Microsoft last year so that he could compete in the tournament. Former Vice President Dick Cheney actually cheated his way into the competition and injured his back in the first round last week, forcing him to attend the inauguration of Barack Obama in a wheelchair. Contestants will have to turn extra hard this year to defeat reigning champion and former Enron CEO Jeff Skilling. They say he's in jail, but he's actually been training and living on the island since 2001, subsiding only on berries and nuts. But he'd better watch out because there's a new challenger this year. They said that John Thane, former CEO of Bank of America and Merrill Lynch, was fired. But in fact, he's been training to go on the island as well. My money is still on Skilling, but maybe on Steve Jobs. We must wish them all luck. You might be asking how I know all of this. But I'm sorry I can't tell you. You're not a monk. Why did you have to challenge me to talk about Genie? I just finished a difficult exam on it and I don't want to talk about it today. Stupid challenges. This book isn't really a novel so it's kind of hard to talk about. Well, here goes nothing. Genie is a case study in linguistics written by Russ Reimer, originally for the New Yorker magazine. It concerns in particular a little girl from California whose scientists have named Genie to protect her real identity. Now the thing about Genie is that her abusive father basically locked her inside of a closet for the first 12 years of her life, giving her very minimal contact with the outside world. As a result, she underwent almost no mental development. After she and her blind mother were finally discovered and freed from the situation, she was admitted to the Children's Hospital in Los Angeles. Psychologists from around the country went wild. You see, in the same year that Ginny was born, Noam Chomsky rocked the linguistics world with the release of his study, Syntactical Structures. This is the first time that linguists had really delineated the importance of syntax in language acquisition. In fact, the study is so important that its release is now called The Event. All linguistic anthropology is now done under Chomsky's shadow. His big theory was basically that all children are born knowing at some fundamental level about language and that the capacity to learn language is completely innate. Of course, not everybody agrees with Chomsky and the innatists. The environmentalists think that everything is just learned, and that children are blank slates. Jeannie was significant in part because she could shed some light on which theory was correct. The first half of the book, coincidentally the only half that I read, covers mainly the theories of language acquisition and how they apply to Jeannie. You see, Jeannie did come away from the experience with a very limited vocabulary, limited to just kind of tiny little nouns. Over the next few years, her vocabulary, especially concerning nouns and adjectives, greatly expanded. But there was something missing. As it turns out, Jeannie never, and still has never, mastered the use of grammar. AJ, I'm out of time. I'll see you on Monday.